Well, we saw the progress coming together every step of the way, and now the home has finally been completed. They're handing over the keys to the new homeowners today. I'm here at the 3D printed house by Habitat for Humanity, and behind me, they're doing the official unveiling. There's a bunch of news networks covering the presentation, so I'm just gonna take some peripheral shots. But I'm so excited to finally be here on the big day after watching the project from the ground up build in comparison to the other three homes next door. The 3D printed house in our 3D glasses. Hi, Randy Keating, Vice Mayor, the City of Tempe, on behalf of Mayor Corey D. Woods of the City of Tempe, do hereby declare Sean and Marcus's 3D printed home day on February 25th, 2022 in Tempe, Arizona. Thank you. I'm standing behind the four houses built by Habitat for Humanity that they're celebrating today. It's so busy, this is like one of the only places it's quiet enough for me to get decent audio. Can you see which house was 3D printed? From this angle, you might not be able to tell. The other homes have stucco, but the 3D printed home leaves the layers raw and completely exposed. We'll take a closer look. This chain link fence, of course, is only temporary. They're building this block wall to have a little sound barrier between the homes and the road. Welcome to the 3D printed home. Uh, this is what we call our dedication ceremonies. We've got a lot of media, a lot of our friends here today, all the volunteers who put time in on this house, all the donors and sponsors who put time in on this house, the architect, um, and this is our CEO walking up now, make sure we're doing a good job, but we want to thank Jared and all the viewers for coming out and for all the interest in the 3D printed home here in Tempe and um, 3D printing uh, construction across the U.S. Hi, I'm Jason Barlow, the President and CEO of Habitat for Humanity Central Arizona. Welcome to our first 3D printed home, certainly the first one on this street, <laughs> the first one in Arizona. Um, and uh, we just, uh, this has been a labor of love for over two years now when I was first approached by Clarence McAllister and Paul Mooney of uh, Fortis Engineers. And uh, they later spun off 3D Printing USA. And uh, they asked me if I was interested in uh, new technology that would improve affordable housing. I said, of course I am. And the rest is history. We just, we just started running into it. And then a little thing called COVID happened delayed the project for a year while the printer that was coming from Perry in Germany couldn't get over here, the people couldn't come over. So it was quite a journey there. But uh, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, look behind me, you can see a gorgeous home. Families moving in next week. At least they're closing on the home. Habitat does not give away its homes. We sell our homes to our homeowners. They pay a affordable mortgage of uh, no more than one third of their gross monthly income. And at zero interest, at least we don't charge any interest. So that's what makes it affordable. And then all of the volunteers, people you see around me, that put effort and contributed in-kind gifts to the house, that all makes it super affordable too. And so that's kind of the miracle of Habitat. And then the family just pays a mortgage payment back to us each month. And we just apply it back into the program, buy more property, improve property, and keep on going. How long have you been uh, in the city? Uh, I've been with Habitat for a little over six years years now and it has been an amazing an amazing uh, journey uh, sometimes it seems like it could be 60 years or six minutes but yeah six years it's been fun I mean uh, how many doors uh, we built over I think over 1300 homes but you know new homes is only about 10% of what we do anymore the rest of it is in repairs there's so many people that need affordable repairs which I know doesn't fit into 3d but uh, uh, it could, I guess, but uh, there's just a lot of people still with single pane glass in Phoenix and uh, poor insulation, things that they need like that. But I really feel like uh, the 3D printer has the technology, has the potential, and my, my thesis on this was, and people, my staff, uh, get mad at me sometimes when I say this, half the time, half the cost, and half the waste. That's my premise. I still think that is entirely doable with a 3D printer technology. All you have to do is put five to ten homes together, townhomes, two-story, 
Perry is already, or Cobot's already printed three stories, right? You know this, in Germany or more. We could do two-story townhomes. You could make the front end of them look different because the computer doesn't care. Like this home behind me, you see the scalloping, you know, the, the fluted front entryway. We never do that in a Habitat home, but the printer can do it easily. It, so you're going to continue printing homes? We're going to continue printing homes. It's going to be a while. We have a donor who wants to build, who wants to build a veteran's village. Uh, not too far from here in the city of Phoenix. He already has the property. We're going through zoning changes now. And we would love to do just what I told you. Either duplexes or townhomes, 3D print them, just go down the street and use the Habitat model where people like the family here get to participate, work on the home as we build it. And volunteers can come in and help. Hello, I'm Sam Hager. I was responsible for the printing and material operation on the house you see behind me. So this is roughly a 2,600 square foot home, a little about 1,900 livable. Uh, with an attached garage. This was printed over the course about a month and a half uh, last summer. Um, total print time was roughly about 42 hours, so that's when the printer kicked on, started depositing material. We ran into a bunch of issues with the temperature. As m many people probably know, uh, summertime here in Arizona, you're basically trying to build a house inside of a furnace, but we were able to, to work through those issues, uh, work with the volunteers. Um, basically, once it got above 110 degrees, we, we called it for the day and uh, got back inside and hid from the heat. But um, we're very happy with the final result. The homeowner is getting the keys today, which we couldn't be happier with. Um, the home was printed with the Kobod BOD2 printer. Um, since then, now they have the BOD 2.5 with some more upgrades of improvements. So I'm, I'm quite excited to get my hands on that. So currently we, uh, we have opened up our printer sales and our printer rental market. So now we have the, the upgraded version of the printer that built this home available for sale. Um, we're, we're hoping to do a handful more projects this year. We have a really cool one coming up in a couple months in Houston, Texas, which we are quite excited to showcase. Um, we also have a, a new owner of a BOD 2.5 printer in Austin. They are doing a, a really interesting project that's supposed to be completely carbon negative. Um, it'll have single family homes, multi-family homes, duplexes. Um, we're hoping to kick that off sometime in a, in a couple months as well. So a, a lot of cool big things happening uh, with Perry and Cobot. Nice, congratulations. That'll be cool about the Austin awesome project. My name is Clarence McAllister with 3D Construction in Phoenix, Arizona. About three years ago, we reached out to Habitat and Perry with the idea of uh, developing the first 3D printed house in Arizona. And uh, of course, Habitat was excited, new technology. Perry wanted to come into the U.S. with a Cobot printer, so we connected the dots. Uh, a pandemic hit in the middle of it, but we continued with the planning, uh, the design, the planning, the, the getting the permits, uh, and how we're going to accomplish this. And after three years, uh, here we are, uh, the grand opening of this 3D printed house. Uh, the first in Phoenix, in Arizona, and the first fully permitted, uh, where families moving in today. So uh, this was a uh, token, small token appreciation from Habitat uh, to uh, 3D construction. Uh, Paul Mooney, my partner, is not here. Uh, we work very arduously to make this happen, and we hope that this is not going to be the last project, that uh, we have other projects going, that we're able to provide affordable housing and reduce the, the affordability issues in the U.S. So, thank you. Hey, hi, I'm Mark Candelaria, architect with Candelaria Design Associates in Scottsdale, Arizona. We're here in Tempe, Arizona today at the site of the first 3D printed home that's soon to be inhabited for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, very proud to be a part of this project and um, all the uh, technology and um, different applications that we've learned from this 3D printing project. Uh, like I said in my speech today, what was the, the best part of this whole thing is just how the community came together to make this really happen. We, we did the design during COVID, we're working with a company, Perry, in Germany, and so we did the whole thing virtually. I mean, we virtually did it on Zoom, and uh, it all came together miraculously with a lot of hard work and effort by a lot of people. So we got a car here, so let me get out of the way. This is what it's about, ad lib, man. You gotta call an audible. <laughs> we, did, we called a lot of audibles on this, on this project. 
Uh, but that's what it's all about. Everyone was committed to make this happen. And again, we learned so much and we're so excited about what we can do the next go around. I think there's amazing opportunities to get more families into smaller footprints and do it in a way that becomes very repetitive, yet we can customize things. That's the neat thing about 3D printing. It doesn't have to all look the same. You know, it's just like when you print something, you can always change a couple words, change a couple letters, and all of a sudden it looks totally different. So I think, again, there's just, this is just the start, and we're so excited to be a part of it. And you can find us on Instagram, Candelaria Design um, is our Instagram, our website, candelariadesign.com, and and YouTube, we're also on Candelaria Design. So you'll find some of our cool stuff. We do trips to Europe. We do cooking. We're all about lifestyle. And what a better way to start celebrating a new way of living than in a 3D printed house. All right, excellent closing. Well done. We should, uh... My name is Damon Wake. I'm uh, the project manager for Candelaria Design Associates, the architect that designed uh, this home. So, you know, when we were designing the house, we started with the premise of taking the existing floor plan of the houses that were right next to it, which you can see the three houses that were built, their normal frame construction, and just adapting it and then providing some tweaks that would make it a little bit interesting and trying to utilize some of the opportunities that 3D printing provides. So creating some radiuses where they might be architecturally interesting, but also because you have to use radiuses because of the way the printer head moves, we had to integrate them in certain areas as well. So that uh, allowed us to create uh, some some curves like you see at the, the wall in the, in the kitchen, as well as in the um, the den in the front. And then also we experimented with the, the filleting, the, the wavy curve part that's in the front, just to see what would happen with the printer. And that was an interesting feature that adds, I think, a lot of texture and depth to the house. At the same time, there was a bunch of other design features that we had to solve to make everything work, like involving uh, uh, steel headers that would span uh, openings uh, at the patios, at doors, uh, and window headers like that, and making them architecturally accented as well, so they didn't look like a, an afterthought. Um, and then we also used a couple of uh, precast, you could say, features where the printer would just print off a, a piece uh, on the side. It actually printed in the middle of the garage, and then they'd lift it up, and then they'd assemble those pieces so the, the actual the front patio is all uh, precast features that were basically assembled like blocks and then filled with rebar and concrete so they'd be structural. How did you decide the expansion joint system you uh, used? That was basically uh, we 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 weren't exactly sure what we were going to need in terms of expansion joints because no one had printed in the summertime in Phoenix in the desert when it was hot and no one knew how the material with the laticrete mix was going to work so they opted for doing more expansion joints than normal and uh, after the fact they kind of realized it probably had a little too many but it was just about being safe and that was actually a really easy design process because as the the print the concrete is curing and it's still wet you can just come in with a trowel and just cut a line and so it was pretty easy to to do that and I think uh, I don't remember the exact interval but I think it was like something like six or eight feet uh, on center is when they would make a little uh, cut control joint cut and what about the roof? yeah so uh, obviously right now the 3D printing uh, a roof is uh, a little bit more complex and difficult and costly and so we went with like standard trusses that allowed us to have a, a truss cavity depth so that we could fit not only your ductwork but also the AC unit and uh, all the other stuff like from electrical and plumbing and, and things like that that you basically functionally have to get through the house. So we went with standard trusses because especially in, in the market in Arizona that's the most cost effective type of uh, framing. Uh, that you can do and uh, we did some modifications though to make it more custom than you would get in a normal track house so you can see in the uh, main living area we use girder trusses and then we span those girder trusses with some other truss elements and that created that vaulted ceiling with those high clear story windows which is which is a little bit of a unique feature that you don't typically see 
certainly haven't been seen yet until this one in the house. Yes. Yeah. We try to integrate because the Candelier Design Associates is a is a custom luxury design firm that took on the challenge of, of working on an affordable house, but because of special features and being such a unique uh, uh, project, we wanted to involve some features that you maybe wouldn't ordinarily see in in a normal home. Do you anticipate your firm working on more? I certainly think so. I think uh, Mark Candelari is definitely interested in it, and there have been a few inquiries, so absolutely. Well, you're on the short list now of uh, architects, organizations that have designed a pretty pretty house that's been built in America. That's true. Uh, to, to date, I think the only one in the state of Arizona that's done it. But uh, hopefully there will be more people that will learn from uh, all the experiences that uh, our firm and the Habitat design team have, um, have went through to learn, learn on this one.